If you have a creative business such as dancing, producing videos, painting, anything creative, making sandals, you need to get it registered now because you could be missing out on millions of dollars of funding to boost your business and other great perks. I'm Kalila Reynolds and it's time for another episode of Money Moves JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's Business Advisory Service, giving you the tools to grow your business. My guest today is Andrea Dempster Chung from Kingston Creative. She's going to be telling us all about the Create Tech Initiative. Hi, Andrea. Welcome back. Hi, Kalila. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. So this time we're on Money Moves JA with Exim Bank. At last time we were telling us about some of the creative initiatives there with Kingston Creative. And now you're involved in something called Createch. So tell us, what is that? Well, Createch is a really cool new movement. It's how what happens at the intersection of creativity and technology. So how can we use technology to drive our natural, raw, creative talent forward? And you would know, you know, what happened when the financial industry met technology, we got fintech. Right. And when the medical industry met technology, we got medtech. Right. So Createch is just exploring um, artificial intelligence, how that can drive different aspects, augmented reality, NFTs, non-fungible tokens, which it's are just taking the world by yeah. storm, blockchain. How can things be used to distribute creative products differently in the back end? And also just to deliver to the audience in a different way. So Createch is a really cool new digital age for creativity. Okay, so what is the program surrounding that now? So our main partner on this program is the IDB. So IDB Labs has funded a three-year partnership with Kingston Creative. And within this program, there is a whole journey for creative entrepreneurs. So just like any entrepreneur, you know, if you're a tech entrepreneur, you need an accelerator, you go into an incubator program, you get office space, maybe you go on an exchange program. And we found that there just weren't these supports, the supporting environment for creatives just wasn't there. It's as if they were viewed as just, oh, your raw talent just going carry you, mm -hmm. you know? And so we said, no, we need to put that enabling environment in place. And so what we have is, first of all, a training program. So partnering with Heart and IDB, we have free training and certification for creatives for three years. This is in business skills and in um, digital skills. So, you know, post-COVID, digital is everything, yes. and we need to know how to reach our customers. And free is also everything. All of that. <laughs> yes, yes. Let's not sleep on the free. It is free training and certification because we really think inclusion and access is so important. We have so many creatives that live and work downtown that we didn't want a barrier in between them getting the business skills right. they needed. And just general business skills. We find that, you know, creatives in Jamaica have a lot of raw talents, but what they don't have is a knowledge of how to scale the business, how to make your strategy, you know, these kind of things. So this is what we'll be teaching. Uh, courses in uh, intellectual property, in, um, you know, just entrepreneurship generally, in social media and digital marketing. So it's a whole suite of things that will run for three years. So that's our training element. Okay, so what are some of the other elements? Well, some of the other elements are the business and IP registration drive, which is now currently going on, which I guess we'll talk about a little bit. Right. Um, this one is we are paying you to register your business. Oh. We think formalization is so important that, you know, you would know that there's a lot of these uh, grants uh, available. So, for example, DBJ's Biggie Grant, Exim's um, grants that are out, right. uh, Compete Caribbean, um, Caribbean Development Bank. Regionally and locally, there's a lot of funding out there for entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. but none of it is accessible to you unless you're registered. Right. So there's even idea stage grants, there's commercialization mm -hmm. grants. Money is out there, yeah. but how do you get to it? You, you to must be registered. be registered, exactly. Do you find that creatives in particular shy away from registration for some reason? I think there's just a perception that, I don't think it's creative shying away so much as society not really noticing that creative entrepreneurs are actually entrepreneurs and actually need to register. There's a way in which creativity is viewed and the arts is viewed like a hobby. Mm -hmm. It's viewed like, you know, something you just do for free, like it don't have a cost, like mm -hmm. there's no pricing structure, like just come and do a little thing. And creatives are always saying, no, wait a second. This is a discipline. We've been to school for this. We have trained for this. The little dance number that you see took hours of choreography, rehearsal, etc. I've actually patented that dance move. And years of practice to and get to that yeah, level. Exactly. But I think we've always thought of creativity as something that people just do by magic. And maybe because we're such a talented country. Mm -hmm. 
you know, that might be part of it. We're too talented. <laughs> um, but no, I think people are waking up to the fact that it's a business. <clears throat> and we need to start to understand the business of behind music, the business behind visual art, the business behind dance, the business of film. And when we do that, then it will go from, oh, we have a lot of talent, to, oh, we're making a lot of money and we're really growing our creative economy, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And the only thing I find when you work in the creative industries, too, is that people uh, don't necessarily value your time as an artist, which is what you were saying, but they might say, oh, but it's only going to take you an hour to, to do this painting. Yeah, right. but it took me 10 years to learn how to do that in an hour. <laughs> you know? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and you go with somebody less experienced, then it's going to take them 10 hours to do the very same job. Yeah. It's a, a real difficulty that we have in, in creative and other industries as well. So, all right, so we've gone through registration incentive mm -hmm. uh, to what else? Intellectual property. How much of a, a role does that play in creative industries? It's huge. In other countries, your IP can be used as collateral at a bank. You know, in Jamaica, you know, we just take the IP for granted. It's super important. Yeah, to, to a limited extent. I hear <laughs> XM is offering something, they recently started offering something where you can use your IP as, a, as collateral. That is fantastic news. I mean, I'm really glad to hear that because that's the direction we've been trying to get everybody to move in. Understanding what you have that is of value, not taking it for granted, and then protecting it. So that when you go in, everybody, of course, now wants to set up their little e-commerce site. Mm -hmm. They want to put their creative products out there for the world. And if you're not protected, there's nothing to stop anybody from taking that design and running off with it. So before you start to go digital and put everything out there in the world, it's super important that you understand IP, you've protected, registered everything that you need to register so that you're safe and protect, your your creative products are safe and protected out there in the world. Yeah. Hi, Jaipo. You guys, <laughs> you guys can watch the episodes we did with Jaipo. I'll put the link in the description box below. We're also partnering with Jaipo and Company's Office on this business and registration. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. All right. We're our partners. So, you actually, so how much do you get paid to, to register your business? $12,500. You can get as much as that back. Some of the registrations are lower cost, but you can get up to twelve five back. So you basically go to a course, figure out what it is, or talk to an advisor, figure out what you need to register, complete your application, at Jaipur Company's office, and then we reimburse you. And we're actually changing it a little bit to see whether we can actually even take that part away, like you don't have to pay first. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, check on our website, www.kingstoncreative.org, and the details of how you get your reimbursement will be there. So that 12.5 covers both the company registration and the trademarks registration? Yes, either okay. one that you choose to apply for. Right, because I, mm. I was just on Jaipur, I was just applying for some trademarks, and it's like 7,000 something. <laughs> Per application, right, and right. Then at company's office, depending on what category you're applying for. So, so are you still eligible, regardless of whether you register as an LLC or partnership or sole trader, whichever category? Yes, whichever category of registration. We feel that you know any move you make towards formalization is important. So it doesn't have to be a limited liability company. You can just register as a sole trader, and then you make steps from there. Um, the key is, as we said, access, right? How you grow your business is access to loan financing, grant financing. We need you to have this access and to be seen um, in the entrepreneurship space. And so any form of registration can make you eligible. So we just want you to be eligible and aware of all the things that you can get to grow your creative business. Okay, so what else is covered? We spoke about the IP, the registration, and you told us what creative, creative tech is. <laughs> what yes. are some of the other elements of the program? So some of the other elements of the program are a hackathon where we're bringing together creative businesses and tech businesses to solve real world problems. And then we fund those problems. Some are a partnership with Jampro called Best Pitch Forward where we bring investors in and creatives learn how to pitch. So 150 creatives are trained in how to pitch and how to package your idea as an investable product. And then the best of the pitchers get to go before on a live pitch night, go before the judges, and then they actually get cash. They get some seed capital to take and fund their ideas. Um, and even those who don't win, they are seen by these investors who then can book B2B meetings with them, private sessions afterwards. And some of the people who didn't even win were picked up last year by other investors after the event. So there's Best Pitch Forward. There's also an entrepreneur exchange where we'd be sending two entrepreneurs every year for the next three years off to another country to a partner incubator, yeah, to make market connections. Sometimes you don't know how to break into a market if you've never traveled to the place, you don't understand how it works. So tell me something, Andrea. How do creatives figure out how to even price their art? Because it's just such a 
it's intangible and sometimes well it is tangible in many ways yeah you have you can monetize it but how do you figure out how much do i charge for my painting or how much do i charge to do a dance for somebody How, how do you figure that out you know you're right there's intangible and there's tangible so in creativity, there's stuff that is a product that you can hold. So say you're a sandals maker, you, right. you know, you have a product and there's certain the cost of the raw materials that went into that. But then there is, you know, stuff that has, it, it's not about how many hours you spent doing the art. Mm-hmm. It's about the level of mastery of the artist that created it and the right. price that he can command or she can command. And so pricing, it also varies a lot between industry because in creativity, the creative and cultural industry is really, really wide. You have your filmmakers, you have your visual artists, some are painters, some are sculptors, you have your artisans that make from jewelry to clothing, you have your fashion designers, they have people that do heritage tours. This is part of the creative and cultural industries, people who write books. So each and every strand of the arts has its own pricing mechanism and norms. So it's definitely not a one size fit all. And it's funny you mention it because in our training with heart, we are developing a certification course for pricing awesome. because it's such a key you element to, to this. To price. Absolutely. You can't make money if you're constantly underpricing yourself. So, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So you mentioned some categories of uh, people in the cultural, in the creative industries. So yes. who can apply for this program? Are there specific categories? No, everyone. If you, for example, uh, run a heritage site, say you're in a compound, you could apply. Because tours, heritage, cultural heritage, that all fits in it. Festivals fits in it. So creative events. So, you know, the big players would be like your Dream Weekends and your Rebel Salutes. All of those things are cultural events. So festivals all fit into it as well. And then, of course, you've got your dance, music. How could we forget? Dance, music, art, and the more traditional fashion, those more traditional um, elements. So everyone... Anyone who is a creative can apply for this. And if you're even thinking of getting into it, there's still a lot of stuff that's elig- that you'd be eligible for. So you also have a culture summit coming up. Tell me about that. Yes, the Kingston Culture Forum. It's a really exciting opportunity to bring the ecosystem together. So when we started Kingston Creative and we started working you know, in this space, it, what was amazing, mind-blowing to me, was how many different arms of government were involved in the creative industries in some sort of way. It's an industry, so it's Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce. There's a financial element, right? The creative economy, that's Ministry of Finance. There is, um, you know, you've got JBDC, you've got JAMPRO, you've got Ministry of Culture, you've got Ministry of Tourism, because people come here for our culture. Mm -hmm. There's sun, sea, and sand everywhere in the world, right? So there's a lot of different fragmentation, and this Kingston Culture Forum is just bringing all of the ecosystem stakeholders together. And uh, that's going to be in September this year. And we're really excited about this forum. Again, it's sponsored by the IDB because they, they recognize that it's not just about training people. It's not just about making a pretty downtown. It re, you really need to have all the players on the same page and everybody pulling in the same direction for this to really work. But we do believe that this is going to be, you know, a real catalyst for developing and growing our creative economy. If we can get all the pieces together and yes. get them going right. Yes. yes. All right. So I'm sold. I'm hoping that you're sold if you're watching. How do people participate? So go to our website. What's happening right now is training and the business and IP registration drive. All right. Thank you so much, Andrea. Oh, you're very, very welcome. Thanks for giving us the opportunity to talk about it and let people know what's out there. And now here's a recap of Andrea's main points. Kingston Creative, in partnership with the IDB, is working with the company's office and Jamaica Intellectual Property Office on a drive to register creative businesses and trademark their intellectual property. The Createch program offers free training and certification for three years geared towards building business and digital skills. A certification program is now available at heart that helps creatives know the value of their work. That's it for this episode of Money Moves JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's Business Advisory Service, giving you the tools to grow your business. Check out their website, eximbankja.com, and check out my website, kalilorunnels.com, for a summary of this episode.